Alright, and welcome back to Zero Cool Gaming, and today we're going to be doing a review of a video game called XCOM Enemy Unknown. So I'd like to start this out by kind of doing a, I guess a rundown of the different XCOM games. Um, a lot of them have been uh, strategy type games. This particular one is considered a turn-based tactics strategy or tactical roleplay. So, that's not how all of the games are made for XCOM. Some of them are uh, first-person shooters, some of them are third-person action adventures. Um, so, one of the things that I liked about XCOM, and I still do like, is that they are willing to, and have, done different types of gameplay styles with different games and I think that that's worked out well for them um, because it, it that's what actually got me interested in XCOM at all one of the first games that I played was a uh, third person action adventure type and then I played the first person, uh, like an FPS. It still had some a lot of role-playing elements. And then I played this one, which is a uh, turn-based tactical or strategy-based. Now, these type of games I normally uh, avoid. Truly. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I like RPGs, I like turn-based RPGs, um, and that in and of itself, I think that uh, the genre has been watered down to include a lot of games that I would consider uh, turn-based RPGs, but regardless, um, the strategy type games, real-time strategies, turn-based strategies. Uh, for the most part, I've tried to uh, avoid those type of games because um, I guess you could say that the play style is addictive to me, and too much so. Um, and I, I saw the problem early on, like years before this came out. Um, and I didn't want to be uh, locked into a particular game for years on end because I enjoyed the type of uh, gameplay that it provided. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy playing games. And one of the things that I like about playing games is trying different types of uh, gameplay and enjoying them for what they are. With your approval, um, even though I do have uh, a tendency to Fabrication go overboard, and I have with a few games. 
Uh, there's been games that I've played for three or four it's years at the time. Of interesting discoveries based uh, on games the like Doom, the, the first Doom. You back. Games like uh, uh, Unreal to Tournament 2003 and 2004. And then again with Titanfall 1 and 2. So there's been a few games throughout the years that I have certainly uh, played a lot more than I, I probably should have and got way more involved with Commander, than I do with other games. Um, Commander, and for me, these types of games are the, the type that I would sit there and play for years on end. And, and I know that. Which is, like I said, why I point them. It is but that you investigate this I, I like this uh, game style, obviously. Um, I like the way that they set it up. I like the... I wouldn't exactly call it random um, fields. Because there's only so many different fields that it generates. But... Um, it, it does give a little bit of uh, randomness, randomness to the game itself. I feel that it's it's pretty well balanced. They did a good job with uh, not making it unfair. But I also like the fact that if you uh, repeatedly make bad decisions, the game will punish you for it. Not to worry. And, and that's a good thing. I consider right. that speak to um, the commander. good programming. I think the game should do things like that. Commander, um, based on Dr. I've always report, enjoyed games that we begin researching the new uh, she's forced you to think. And once completed, we can send the plans down to engineering for fabrication. Are making bad and decisions troops with it in the barracks. and you like Dr. have your Shen entire enemy wiped out as a result of your construction of the containment facility. Your entire team wiped out as a result, and you have to go back to a previous save to try again and rethink your strategy, rethink the your approach, and things of that effect. That's a good thing to me. Parts of the ship. Um, I like that I kind of. Uh, I guess dedication to the mechanics within the game itself and dedication to trying to understand uh, not just what the game wants but you know truly what's necessary for each situation that it throws at you and uh, like I said I, that, I think that's a really good way of uh, creating games I think games should uh, push your understandings. Uh, I like games where, you know, you'll enter a boss fight or whatever in RPGs and you'll die uh, because you weren't properly prepared for it. But you learn from dying in that boss battle what you do need to do based on the different items that you well, have, the different types of I defenses that you can you about our uh, change out, armor, weapons, we things of this effect, on high alert. We'll need them to so that you can uh, properly approach that boss battle process. and defeat it. I think it's also worth and if the game's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, been programmed no properly, it's given you the tools already to do that. Additional it's just a matter of you applying what you learn by losing on the to overcome it. To build additional satellites. Goodbye, um, Commander. So, yeah, this type of stuff I think is, is a good thing overall, truly. So what is this game actually about? Well, it starts out with the Earth being invaded by aliens, and they drop these uh, pods all over the planet. And We've these pods and and uh, send out a gray mist, not gray, green mist, that attaches to people and prevents them from being able, able to move or run away. And then it gives you the inference, it doesn't state it directly, uh, at least not at the beginning of the game, that this green mist infected those people, and then the aliens that you're fighting um, grew inside of them, and when they got big enough, they bursted out of them. Which is kind of horrifying when you think about it. 
but that's the impression that the game leaves on you very early on without actually telling you that that's what's happened. Um, it, it's a good point of storytelling as far as I'm concerned. Um, you don't have to, to explain everything and the way that they present it is more like you would encounter in real life where when you're investigating something you don't have all the answers you can um, make assumptions you can um, theorize as to what has occurred or hasn't occurred but you don't have all the information yet to make a positive determination um, this type of story Telling has been lost in recent years, um, and that's not a good thing. That's why I avoid most new games created. I, I don't watch movies anymore. Um, I stopped reading comic books years ago because of this. Uh, it, it's like they just lost their ability to actually tell a story or make it interesting and engaging. Um, and, you know, that's to the detriment of not just all of those different uh, fields of entertainment. It's now a detriment to gaming, and it's starting to infect anime, which is one of the last forms of entertainment as far as movie-style entertainment that's left that hasn't been infected by this insanity. So, and I say hasn't been affected after I just said that it's starting to get that way. It's been infected, but it's not like it is in the rest of them where they make, you know, 99 uh, horrible movies and then one decent one. It, it, anime is not to the point yet where they're making 99 horrible animes and one decent one. But if things continue down the same road as I've seen with... Uh, the rest of the forms of internet entertainment, that's exactly what's going to happen. And it is sad to see that happen. Um, regardless, that's one of the main reasons that I started this channel, to show people that there are old games that you can play, old movies that you can watch, and anime that's out there that's still decent and entertaining and fun to engage with. Um, regardless, getting back to the story, uh, you have a command center. You can choose where to put that um, all over the planet. And within that command center, it's kind of like um, building it up. Uh, there's a whole uh, aspect of the game where you improve upon and grow the command center that you uh, start with. You make new facilities for it, new containment chambers, you improve the uh, facilities themselves, you improve the, uh, or I should say, you know, um, improve like the engineering section, or, um, manufacturing facilities. Uh, all of this type of stuff. You improve it, or grow it, or you know, make it better. And there's lots of games that actually incorporate that type of uh, building aspect to their games. With this one being a sci-fi uh, science fiction game um, focused on an alien invasion the base storyline itself is something that I find interesting and engaging just on itself. Um, other aspects of it is that you can actually send out like uh, interceptor planes to shoot down um, alien vessels and then you can send out your team to be on, you know, on the ground and try to not only recover the vessel for uh, study and development of new technologies, but usually in the, uh, or at the crash site, I should say, you'll also find other, um, 
item of interest that will help you to um, grow your your base or help you to develop new technologies things of this effect uh, one of the things that's uh, stable throughout this game is a type of nano machine that you can collect on the field that they call meld and they'll tell you how many you know with each different area that you go to they'll tell you how many they want you to collect and then your your manufacturing facilities as well as your engineering facilities will use this meld material with their nanodes or nano machines to uh, create new things for you regardless of what those things may be because it's a variety of stuff that they uh, develop and the the manufacturing facilities actually build for you, you and your teams so yeah it, it's pretty interesting to say the least I also like the way that they do their tutorial in this game because it's an in-game tutorial your first mission is just a straight up tutorial that tells you uh, where to move each of your operatives, um, when to fire, um, and it also shows you how you lose op operatives with the uh, permadeath, uh, which is an aspect of this game. When an operative dies, they're dead permanently, you can't bring them back, blah blah blah. Um, not that there isn't the option to bring them back on the field if you can get to them quick enough. But uh, if you can't, then they're just dead. And on the first mission, um, all of the operatives but one die. Uh, therefore, introducing you to that aspect of the game. So it's something that you'll keep in the back of your mind for the rest of the game. And again, that's what I call good game design. Um, another aspect of the game that you learn, which is interwoven within the story itself, is that uh, different parts of the world are starting to panic. And as you help a particular area on the planet, the panic meter will go down while the areas that you chose not to help at that time, their panic meter will go up. If the panic meter gets too high on a particular area, they will leave the um, union of different countries that are part of XCOM. And when they leave, their resources and funding leave with them and you can't recruit them again later so it's another balancing act that has to be done throughout the entire game if you want to keep all of the different uh, countries of the world part of the XCOM facility to ensure that you have you know constant money coming in constant resources coming in and the ability to not necessarily easily manufacture uh, new equipment for your teams, but more easily than it would be without them. Field who was attempting to recover new intelligence and it's all interwoven within the, the story of the game. The you know, the story will say, well, relays. you know, we have these we two have places that are currently under attack, intel. and you have to pick between new one of them. Received. You can't do both, um, and that's done deliberately to uh, emphasize the fact that you have to balance all of this and the next time that there's a mission in the area that you didn't go to you'll have to prioritize that area over others to bring your panic level down it, it's that sort of thing so it gives you a choice and in a way takes away a choice later even though it presents that you still have one it comes with consequences and another one of those consequences is that too many people leave the uh, United XCOM uh, Federation or whatever they call it. Uh, the game ends. It, it just straight up ends. <laughs> you failed. Uh, restart the game, try again. Which again, I think is a good uh, programming design Please. for this type of game. 
because it shows that you've made too many mistakes to actually complete the game. And at that point you would have. So it, it's got its own self-regulation system within it as well. Um, and I don't see a problem with any of that because it's well balanced. Um, it truly depends on how well you're able to keep all of that in balance without uh, losing too many resources in the process or any resources for that matter so yeah I mean it's it's a fun game truly and I enjoy the way that they put it together great work out there commander one of the things getting back to the story uh, the manufacturing department and the uh, medical department um, tell you that they would like you to capture a live uh, alien and command has severe issues with that but before you can even be put on a mission to do so the manufacturing facility needs to create a containment cell for it so that it doesn't you know mind control everybody in the building to release it are worse um, and then uh, once you convince convince command that it might be a good idea to try to capture a live alien they come to the realization that if they can actually communicate with these things they might be able to find out what their intention is where their bases are um, and may be able to more quickly uh, reverse engineer technologies as well as create new ones so there's a lot of benefits to actually capturing one of these aliens alive regardless of how dangerous they are and how dangerous uh, containing one of them may be not to mention the um, threat that it possesses to your team in the effort of trying to capture one so yeah the a lot of cool things going on all at the same time truly and I get a kick out of that I think it's a, a good thing um, right after you shoot down your first alien craft you learn that uh, the aliens can use a basically a pure form of energy to control mechs that they create almost instantaneously and you learn that part of the uh, alien population, if you want to call it that, are beings of pure energy. And I think that that as well is an interesting aspect to the story and how they um, wove that into the gameplay and how that works with the gameplay. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of things to, to like about this game, truly. They did a good job with it. All right, so after you get the facilities built to contain one of the aliens inside of a cell, they send you out to go capture one, and you bring back a live alien for them to study, and they're able to, We're going to be putting down in Mexico capture some of its thoughts, it looks like we got and the apparently the... Away from any major city centers. We should get down creature the that it thinks sack. about or that it's connected to is the energy based aliens so they then send you out to capture one of the energy based aliens and of course the only place that they know that they actually are is in a down uh, alien spacecraft so you go out and you eventually capture one of those and when you capture it, it turns into a crystal structure and you bring that back to the base and they tell you that they're going to, you know, need some time to decrypt the uh, language that it's using and they're also going to need some time to build a device 
that will connect to this crystal so that they can figure out what it's used for in this form. So eventually, um, they're able to decrypt the um, transmission to a point that's being sent out at least to the point that they can track it and they're also able to build a device that it will connect to allowing them to do that and the signal that's being sent out is tracked to a base on earth that is hidden from normal view and when you first look at it you can't even see that it's there you've got to change the view on your satellite to even recognize the fact that it's there at all and uh, of course then they send you out to capture the alien base that's been built once you capture the alien base you find a larger transmitter or um, what could also possibly be a uh, information center and you bring this larger device back to your home base and they start researching it of course and cert shortly after you capture the alien base and you know, basically rob it of some of its technology the Our aliens start slaughtering people in large uh, in the and wipe out this cities once and, for all. Good luck, and they start sending out different types of aliens to That's achieve that goal and out. essentially changed up what they've been doing up to this point Looks like Exalt prefers form over function. and you learn the hard way that the new types of aliens that they're creating and sending out um, if they poison the body before it dies, that body is reanimated as something like a zombie under their control. So they can make your missions a lot more difficult, especially if several of your team end up under the control of the aliens. It just gives them more cannon fodder to go after you with. Um, and then eventually, the aliens themselves end up attacking your base command in much the same way that you attack theirs. So, one of the interesting things that happened just before the invasion on your command center is that several of the people who have been working there um, seem to be put under the control of the aliens and you don't know exactly how that happened you know what caused them to become controlled by the uh, alien influence that they're obviously being controlled by but they do certainly do quite a bit of damage to your base to soften it up before the aliens invade it. Um, they blow up your research facilities. They um, bring down the power grid. They infect the um, computer systems. And one of the things that you'll notice is that uh, just before your base gets attacked, um, depending on how you've been playing the game, you will have facilities for either making a bio-enhanced human or a mechanized enhanced human. And you will only get the opportunity to make one or the other before your main base gets attacked. And you know, depending on which one you have uh, built first, 
assuming that you didn't try to build a second one of the same thing. Um, the other one that's in the process of being built are changed, modified, however you want to put it, um, will be destroyed when they attack the base. Alright, so during the invasion of the base you get to see a bunch of new enemy types uh, that the aliens create. And then after you secure the base and eliminate the invaders, um, the people who were affected by the mind control and essentially, you know, destroyed the base, at the very least softened it up, regained their ability to think for themselves, and the doctor has no idea how the aliens were capable of taking over the minds of so many people. If this was something that they were normally capable of doing, they wonder why they haven't used this before now. Um, one of the next missions that you get is from a field agent who discovers that there are humans who are traitors to their own kind that are working with the aliens. And she's gathered some pretty vital information and you're sent out to extract her. Um, in an effort to, of course, acquire that information and use it to your advantage. After successfully extracting the agent from the traitor human encampment that also has aliens in it, uh, you learn some valuable information about a transport vehicle uh, having some very valuable cargo in it that's currently stuck on the bridge that is on top of a dam. So you head out to that area and you secure the bridge and as you're opening the cargo area of the vehicle a human jumps out and tries to run away gets very upset with you and tells you that a bunch of people she knows have been captured and uh, killed by the aliens and while you're trying to secure her she releases a psychic pulse and uh, you end up eventually taking her back to base and they figure out that there is another alien base where these captured psychics are being taken so you head off to that base uh, eventually you eliminate the enemies within and you rescue the kidnapped subjects that they were experimenting with um, and bring them back to your headquarters by doing so you learn that the aliens have been using human psychics as a way to amplify their own abilities and that's how they were able to take over so many minds at one time inside the base. The downside to this is that it harms the human that they use in this way to amplify their own mind control abilities. And then the doctor uh, starts to study these people and thinks that she might be able to genetically modify some soldiers to have some psychic abilities as well and they begin the process of doing that uh, eventually succeeding with one soldier who uh, was compatible with the changes being made and now exhibits uh, some pretty powerful psychic abilities as a result so 
as you can see this is a pretty interesting story uh, there's a lot to it and it just keeps getting added to as you go through the game itself um, one of the things I liked about this story is that I really never had any idea as to where they were going to go with it next um, and a lot of the times my assumptions and thoughts on where they might be going um, were proven wrong and that's a good thing uh, I don't mind that type of storytelling where it leaves you breadcrumbs that say one thing but once you fully investigate it you realize that it meant something else it's good storytelling all right so eventually you get some new alien tech functional in your base and when you connect it to your communication system and satellite system it enables you to be able to detect and track a cloaked enemy spaceship and you send out your hybrid uh, spaceship of your own that you recently developed to shoot down this new enemy craft after doing so of course you then send in a ground team to assess the situation uh, contain the area the area capture the new spacecraft and bring in any useful tech so you do all of that and once you secure the area and secure the ship you find that there's a new uh, alien tech on board that doesn't match anything that you found previously as well you encountered a very powerful alien psychic and you still don't know exactly what they were wanting to do with human psychics but you figure this has something to do with it so you capture the device you bring it back to the base and they seal it away and begin their study of it because they really have no idea what it is other than the fact that it produces an insane amount of energy so Shortly after this point, you find the uh, base of the human trailer traders, and you decide to go ahead and sack their base to disrupt not only their communications, but their efforts to uh, work with and against the humans for whatever purpose that is. Once you've destroyed the uh, main base of the human traders, you head back to base and your psychic warrior that you created at this point interacts with the new tech that you found on the cloaked enemy ship which basically looks like a glowing ball and it makes her not only more powerful in the process but able to understand um, the aliens mind connect with it and communicate with them not that they really have a lot of desire to communicate with us they still consider us lesser than but this one human that has the psychic abilities and was able to interact with the orb um, they at the very least have high hopes for it um, Shortly after this happens, a gigantic alien ship um, enters the Earth. And then, of course, you work your way onto that gigantic alien ship to once again secure, contain, and then uh, capture any new alien tech that you find on board. 
once you get on board the aliens that you can communicate with start telling you about all the different species that you've been encountering and how they were all failures and then at the end of it it tells you how they themselves were failures but maybe you won't be but once you down the last enemy the orb begins to alter itself from being a interaction device into becoming a small black hole so your psychic member um, forces you off the alien ship uses the orb to take control of the ship and flies it up out into space and then rather than turning into a black hole causes the alien orb to explode uh, destroying the alien vessel obviously but saving the earth and everyone else from being ultimately destroyed by a black hole and that's how this game ends so it's a fun game uh, lots of stuff going on all the time lots of uh, interesting story points um, not a lot of foreshadowing so it uh, doesn't explain itself before it explains itself so yeah I mean there's a lot to like about this game truly Not your purpose. you need our guidance of this hour without us what are you to that location. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. I hope that you enjoy the rest of yours. If you could hit the like, subscribe, rumble, follow buttons, all that does help. And I will talk to you later. <laughs>